All right, welcome in to another Media Minutes. If you've watched any of my stuff before, you've seen this guy around, Andrew Bell. Andrew, welcome in. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, and thank you for having me on the show. It's glad to be glad to be back. You know, we had you on last year on Hockey Talk. This year, we're going to do a little Media Minutes with you because you've stepped up the ranks a little bit at ASU right now. So, tell us what you're doing, and tell us uh, what your career is, path is headed towards. Uh, so right now I'm doing, uh, I'm working with, well for tonight I'm with the Pac-12 Plus stream. Uh, I'll be doing intermission report for the ASU game tonight. Uh, and then I'm also sports editor with the State Press, which is the school newspaper at ASU. So uh, just doing a variety of things, trying to get better at everything and uh, hopefully get better at my craft along the way. Some, something like that. <laughs> you know, when we talk about the Cronkite School and ASU, there's no place better to be, and they give you tons of opportunities. This is a big one for you, I know, doing the uh, the editor role, but what's that been like for you so far early in the season? Uh, you know, the editor role is, uh, it's hectic sometimes. There's a lot of stuff you got to deal with, just not only hockey, but just every sport on campus that's kind of what we're dealing with but uh, it's super fun the staff I work with is super great and easy to work with um, and then on top of that being out here this is my favorite place to be is at the hockey rink so uh, that's just a bonus is doing the Pac-12 plus stuff and doing broadcast stuff but uh, the editing stuff's fun and just mixing in broadcast and writing uh, it's really fun for me I, I enjoy it a lot. You know, last year I asked you what you wanted to do when you uh, graduated and made your career path. Has any changes come up, or what, what's still your plan? Uh, you know, I, looking at it right now, I'm just writing about hockey. Uh, I'd love to work for an NHL team one day, do beat writing somewhere along the line, uh, move my way up somewhere. But uh, got to start wherever, wherever it takes you, so whether that's high school sports or whatever sport it is, I'd be willing to do it. But like I said, ultimate goal would be NHL uh, writing for an NHL hockey team. That would be a goal of mine. So let's talk a little bit about this team. We're seeing the uh, Sun Devils off to a 2-1 and one start after that loss last night. A, kind of a heartbreaking loss, really. It was 3-2, to two, and I think we all felt in the press box that they had a shot at winning the thing. And now they have the number one team in the country again here tonight at Oceanside. So what's your thoughts so far on what you've seen on this Sun Devil NCAA team? Uh, so far this season, I think there's just a ton of improvements. It's night and day between, you know, last year to this year, just the players they have brought in, guys like P.J. Uh, PJ Morocco, uh, Austin Lemieux, uh, Kuzman Zis, who's been phenomenal. Uh, just those freshman guys have helped them so much. There's a lot more speed and skill. But last night, yeah, it was, they put up a good fight. Just a couple penalties in the second period that really led to the Ohio State goals. But um, they put up a good fight last night. And like you said, they made a push in the third period, try to control things. But you see Ohio State's kind of speed, skill, and veteran players closing out that game. But I thought, you know, with the young hockey team playing a one-goal game against the number one team in the country, that says a lot about where the program's at uh, compared to was it, where it was just in, in recent years. So, You know, one of the things Coach Powers tells us, and I'm sure you've heard him say this numerous times already, that the difference this year, he has NCAA talent across the board. He's got depth. He's got power play. And one of the things that you and I were talking about last night is Guys like Dylan Holman and Anthony Croston, who were staples in the program for the first couple of years, have now got a different role, and they seem to be embracing it. Yeah, the, he talked about, you know, Coach Pires talked about veteran leadership, too. Uh, those guys on the third line now that may be one of the best third lines in the country, just the way that they're able, especially on the penalty kill as well, that's really where they've stood out the most uh, is on the PK. And those are guys who are on the first line last year and the year before. So for them to slide back to the third, it just shows kind of the, the depth of the team and the talent that he's been able to bring in. So that line's really stood out to me along with PJ Morocco. I think that's been a cool dynamic, having the freshmen working with two seniors who have been with the program I imagine that's really beneficial for him so um, yeah just the depth and first one through four really even the fourth line last night played really well in that third period um, seeing Pashnuk draw on a penalty late in the third yeah. last night and almost converting a chance uh, late in the third period but that fourth line's been really good as well so just one through four having a lot more depth and a more complete hockey team. The other thing that I think we have to mention is that the defensive core for the last couple of years, they struggled to get out of their own zone. They had Brinson, right? But they didn't really have anybody else that could move the puck. Well, Josh Maniscalco has taken care of that role. He, when he gets the puck, he's fun to watch, isn't he? Yeah, and you talk about Brinson. Brinson, you know, uh, we've seen what he can do offensively. He's a really gifted goal scorer, especially for a defenseman. But it just helps that much more when you have a defenseman like Josh Maniscalco. And you and I were sitting next to each other <laughs> last night in the press box. And, man, he's a really solid stay-at-home defenseman, especially going up against, you know, 
a couple All-Americans that Ohio State had. He really was impressive last night and really through the first two weekends. So I think his pairing along with Brinson, really they complement one another because Brinson's able to step up in the play and Maniscalco is able to step back and um, kind of stay at home and do all the dirty work back behind that. But they've complemented each other really well. And so that top pairing has been really uh, impressive thus far. You know, when you talk about hockey in the desert southwest, you, you see the growth of the NCAA program, and you arrived on campus at just the right time, and in my estimation, just like we started up, you know, three and a half years ago, um, because we thought there was a need for, for hockey coverage. Now you're seeing everything grow. Let's talk a little bit about the women's side of things, because you covered the women's team last year uh, pretty extensively, and it's kind of fun to watch this whole thing grow, isn't it? Yeah, it was really cool last year, um, and even this year I wrote a couple articles over the summer and um, just the beginning of the year for the uh, covering the women's team. And uh, it's really cool to see how excited Coach Ellis is and their coaching staff and just their players. Uh, similar to the men's program, obviously, at the club level, though, I'm just bringing in a lot of new talent. Uh, but talking to them, just seeing their excitement compared to um, having – just having four lines and I mean last year yeah. they didn't have that um, and you know coach Ellis and coach Marino and their coaching staff were joking over the summer with me you know we have full team now they <laughs> had a lot more players this is different so it's really cool to see that aspect and especially for me going starting last year um, covering that team or the team they had a lot of talent but it was just so sparse and they weren't able to you know roll enough lines out there because only two lines so to see them grow from that to what they have now um, it was a really entertaining series they had with GCU just a couple weeks ago both those programs are doing um, really well and growing a lot so both those programs are like I said they're growing and um, along with coach Ellis I think it's really cool to see what they've been able to do at the club level and uh, yeah you know we talk about ho hockey obviously is what you and I are discussing right but the media and being the editor at the state press you get a chance to see a little football as well and the other sports but I asked uh, one of your cohorts, Ethan Schmidt, the, the other night, I said, now that you have a chance to see Herm Edwards and what he's brought, do you think that his charisma, his mojo, if you will, carries over to the other sports? I mean, does the other players, other coaches see what Herm does and, and kind of get a positive vibe off of that? I think so. I think if you're you know, an athlete at ASU or anything along those lines, you look at Herm Edwards and... It's a guy who's been on ESPN. I mean, he's on ESPN Live. Uh, he has viral clips. He had a great NFL career. So I think anytime there's someone with that resume, that track record, who's had success, then Coach Edwards, you know, when I've gotten a chance to go to football stuff, he's one of those guys when he walks in the room, when he talks, people listen. Kind of, He's just got a lot of great mannerisms and um, sayings. And so I think as a from an athlete's perspective and um, from seeing some of the players and, like you said, kind of carrying over to other sports, I think anyone with that track record and that resume, um, definitely kind of something to look up to or someone to watch. But uh, I think all the coaches at ASU are, you know, really stand out. Well, Andrew, let's wrap things up and tell everybody where you're from, what year you are here at ASU, and where you want to go with your degree from this point. Uh, so right now I'm a senior at the Cronkite School uh, and originally from San Jose, California. And so, yeah, in the process of applying for jobs, all that fun stuff. And, and we still get along even though you're a Sharks fan. And <laughs> yeah, I know. Pacific Division foes. There's two now between Vegas and, uh, right. and Arizona. So if the audience, you know. Had bags on me for that it's all good but yeah grew, grew up a Sharks fan so but it, it's all good um, and yeah just in the process of applying for jobs now and getting on my way out here but yeah I've really enjoyed my time this far it's been super fun. Andrew thanks for your time we'll be in touch with you all season long and hopefully we'll get you back on again. Yeah thanks so much for having me appreciate it.